Citroen's DS4 is a desirable, sporty five-door hatchback that proudly claims not to conform to any established market segment. In reality, it's a grown-up Golf GTI-style car with a coupe look and a slightly higher ride height from which potential buyers can command a rewarding driving experience. A different approach and a very interesting one. Talk of a Citroen DS, and you should be talking of innovation. That famous badge is, after all, borrowed from that applied to arguably the most innovative car of all time. Flaminio Batoni and Andre Lefebvre's 1955 original DS was a car that mixed style with clever technology and didn't play by established class rules. It was a car that exemplified its brand, just as this one does, the DS4. All right, so this Citroen is unlikely to revolutionize its market uh, quite as its predecessor did, but it's an important second chapter in a DS sub-brand there to emphasize the ingenuity that this Gallic brand should really be all about. The first installment of modern day DS motoring was delivered by the DS3 back in 2009, a style conscious three door hot hatch aimed at Mini and Mito customers who would never have considered the sensible Citroen C3 Super Mini on which it was based. Equally sporty and fashion friendly, uh, and based on the underpinnings of a humble Citroen C4 family hatchback, this DS4 uh, competes against slightly larger cars for the attention of family folk who perhaps wish they weren't, or at the very least, don't want to be reminded of the fact. In recent years, these kinds of people have found themselves buying all kinds of different cars. Uh, plush family hatchbacks, GTIs, four-door sports coupes, even SUV-like crossovers. In targeting such customers, what could be better then than to offer up a design incorporating elements from all these categories? A crossbreed, if you will. Now, crossbreeding, as we all know, can be the gateway to the creation of powerful new genes, but it also brought us the Labradoodle. So, which have we here? Let's find out. Taking the engines and the underpinnings of a car never intended to prioritise driving enjoyment, Citroen C4, then combining them with a higher ride height seems hardly likely to be a recipe uh, that's going to produce any kind of tarmac terrier. Yet, astonishingly, by some kind of Gallic black magic, that's exactly what's being served up here. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with first impressions from behind the wheel. Well, you sit 15 millimeters higher up than you would in a Citroen C4 or in any other kind of Astra size Focus family hatchback come to that. Yet, you find yourself in a sporty focused cabin, uh, gripped by wraparound seats and cocooned by a black headlined leather trimmed interior. In a way, it's slightly disconcerting. A feeling that continues out on the road. The stiffer suspension and beefier anti-roll bar that this design enjoys over its C4 stablemate combine to ensure that this car handles like a, a low focused coupe, not a softly sprung family hatchback. This seems a bit odd considering the highest driving position. It, uh, it's certainly a well-judged damping setup, uh, supple in its movements but uh, well controlled when it comes to body roll. And you wouldn't know the electrically powered, hydraulically assisted power steering system from that uh, used in the C4. Uh, yes, it's still slightly lighter than some enthusiasts will want, but there's now feel aplenty. Plus, you get a terrific six-speed manual gearbox that enables you to snap up and down the ratios like Sebastian Loeb in a, a round of the World Rally Championship. It just goes to show how basically the same mechanical package can be altered radically differently to suit different products. There's even a Rorty engine note, or at least there is if you go for the top THP 200 petrol variant, which has had its exhaust tuned to better get it the blood pumping through enthusiastic veins as you sprint from rest to 60 in 8.5 seconds on the way to a top speed of 146 miles an hour. 
Now, there are none of those kinds of oral or actual fireworks in this 160 brake horsepower, 2 litre HDI diesel, of course. In fact, one of the first things that you notice behind the wheel in this car is how refined everything is. Nonetheless, it's still pretty rapid, getting from rest to 60 in 9.3 seconds. The top speed is 132 miles an hour. But these are models that will form a small part of the UK uptake for this car. Most DS4 buyers will opt for either 120 or 155 brake horsepower versions of the familiar BMW developed 1.6 litre petrol engine. The latter being a turbo unit that comes uh, with uh, a semi-automatic uh, EGS gearbox. Despite that, it still manages to get from rest to 60 in 9.9 .9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 133 miles an hour. The other engine option is the PSA Group's familiar 110 brake horsepower 1.6 litre HDI diesel, which can be ordered either with a conventional six speed manual gearbox or with the EGS semi automatic transmission that I mentioned earlier, where you get it packaged with a whole range of EHDI efficiency mods. We've had four door coupes. It's about time, according to Citroen that we had a five-door one. Now the stylists of rival models like Seat's Leon or more particularly Alfa Romeo's Giulietta may contend that that's nothing new. Citroen begs to differ, pointing out that the coupe lines of this DS4 are more extreme and they're matched uh, rather uniquely to the kind of high-ish crossover-like stance that's so in vogue these days. On first acquaintance, your eyes are drawn to the sculpted wheel arches, the chrome finished waistline and the dark tinted glass. Move to the front and you'll find, completing the look, the prominent boomerang shaped LED daytime running light clusters that provide the family resemblance link to the brand's smaller DS3 model. It's all very different from Citroen's simply styled C4 family hatchback upon which this design is built. A car that's 60 millimetres shorter and 40 millimetres taller and assembled in the same French Mulhouse factory. So the same people screw the same two products together, but with a bit more love apparently in the DS4's case to reflect the extra care and precision that the DS brand is supposed to require. Now, I'm not sure what that says about the way a C4 is built, but there's certainly no doubt that this DS4 uh, feels like a premium product with lovely design touches, like the way that the rear door handles are encased in the extended rear window frames, something that Citroen reckons adds credence, aesthetic credence, to its insistence uh, that this be seen as a five-door coupe. And it's a concept you have to buy into if you're to forgive some of the compromises that that whole thing has forced upon those inside, more specifically, those at the rear. So let's start with the rear seat package. Smallish door openings, together with corners that can easily spear you as you walk past, and rear wheel arches that slightly intrude on the opening itself mean that uh, getting in isn't as easy as it would be in a conventional focus size family hatch. But then this isn't a conventional focus sized family hatch. Sorry, I, I keep forgetting. Now it's something you'll discover taking a seat back here and um, adjusting to the slight restrictions in leg and headroom and noticing the shadow that these huge rear pillars cast over the back section of the cabin. Better uh, instead to view this as the coupe that Citroen is determined that it should be. Now uh, viewed in that light, it's actually quite practical back here. Uh, at least for a coupe, there are uh, the space for two adults or maybe even three children uh, to sit quite comfortably as long as the journey isn't too long. Uh, if you're in that frame of mind, you might even be prepared to forgive the fact that, rather incredibly, the, uh, the rear windows don't actually go down, um, which with the tinted glass can make it feel all rather claustrophobic back here. That's because, thanks to the sweeping haunches of the car, there's actually nowhere downwards for the glass to go. At least that saves three kilograms per door. In complete contrast, up front, it could hardly be more spacious and comfortable. 
Now the first thing that you'll probably notice after taking a seat is the panoramic windscreen offering front seat occupants a 45 degree view upwards that they can choose to avoid on really hot days by pulling forward this sun blind with its integral visor and each visor incorporates a courtesy mirror. Now if you don't pull them forward what you get is a really airy cabin with a feeling for uh, spaciousness that's accentuated actually by this slightly raised driving position. Once comfortable in front of the curvy fascia ensconced in the figure hugging seats you find yourself in front of a three instrument binnacle that fuses digital and analog displays in a layout that looks nice but isn't always instantly easy to read. But overall, this feels like a special place to be, especially if the model you've chosen enjoys some of the finer DS4 details. Highlights being these drilled aluminium pedals, embossed door handles, and on some models, two-tone leather trim with a bracelet stitching pattern said to resemble the links on a watch strap. Then you've got an air conditioning system with three levels from soft to intense. You can fine tune the color uh, background of the instrumentation to uh, your personal taste from cool white to incandescent blue. You can even tailor the functionality sounds of the various um, elements of instrumentation to suit your prevailing mood. Urban rhythmic anyone? As for practicality, well, there are lots of storage spaces and appropriately enough for a French car, door bins generous enough to swallow a bottle of wine. When it comes to larger items, well, the boot here is 21 litres smaller than this model's Citroen C4 Stablemate, but at 359 litres or 385 litres with the underfloor storage compartment in use, it is slightly bigger than the trunk that you'll find in an Alfa Romeo Giulietta or indeed a, a Volkswagen Golf. And you've got this uh, useful uh, ski hatch for poking longer items into. Now, if you push forward the split folding rear seats, the space available rises to a very useful 1,021 litres. DS4 pricing sits mainly in the 18.5 to £25,000 bracket, depending on the model and the spec that you choose. To go from the entry level 120 brake horsepower 1.6 litre VTI petrol model to the 110 brake horsepower uh, 1.6 litre HDI diesel, you're looking at a premium of around £1,300, with an extra £700 on top of that if you want the extra frugality of the eHDI version. Uh, that's if you're looking at a mid spec variant. Um, now, while pricing of this sort is hardly cheap, it does represent a premium of no more than 500 to 1,000 pounds over an equivalent Citroen C4 with the same engine. But of course, uh, potential buyers of this car won't be people considering a Citroen C4. Instead, Citroen hopes that there'll be people that are looking at anything from a BMW 1 Series Coupe to a Nissan Qashqai or a Mini Countryman. Now, the French brand may be right, but Personally, I think that uh, buyers of this car are far more likely to be people looking at a sporty hatchback, uh, a Vauxhall Astra SRI or GTC perhaps, maybe even a Seat Leon FR. Now, uh, those kinds of cars are several thousand pounds cheaper, but have less road presence. For a bit more, you could get closer to DS4 pricing by choosing something like a, a Ford Focus ST or a Renault Sport Megane or exceed this car's pricing by going for a sportily trimmed Audi A3 or a Volkswagen Golf GT or GTI. Perhaps the closest rival in concept to this Citroen though isn't German but Italian. Alfa Romeo's Giulietta shares the same kind of five-door coupe styling and has pricing that's only a few hundred pounds shy of the DS4s. Whichever DS4 model you choose, 1.6 litre petrol with 120, 155 or 200 brake horsepower, or a 1.6 or 2 litre HDI diesel, you should find it to be well equipped, as you'd expect a £20,000 car to be. So all models come with alloy wheels, daytime running LEDs, 
Uh, you've also got front fog lamps with cornering light function, dark tinted rear side windows and a dark tinted hatchback glass area. Then inside you've got uh, um, a decent quality six speaker surround sound CD stereo with USB connectivity that's controllable via a leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel. Plus there's air conditioning, electrically powered and heated door mirrors. You've also got a cruise control with a built-in speed limiter and memory. Plus there's a hill start assist system to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Popular options include a full house Denon sound system, the integrated eMyWay uh, communications, navigation and entertainment system, massaging front seats and a parking space gap measurement feature. Safety wise, to justify the five star Euro NCAP safety rating, you get uh, twin Isofix rear child seat fastening points at the back and twin front side and curtain airbags, as well as the normal electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control so that hopefully you'll never have to use them. Optional is a blind spot information system that stops you dangerously pulling out to overtake another car on the highway. Now if in spite of all that you still manage to have an accident, then the e-touch emergency and assistance system, it's optional but it'll be worth its weight in gold. After a crash, you can use it to uh, contact a call centre that'll know exactly where you are to send out assistance. And should the crash have incapacitated you, it'll automatically call the centre for you and send assistance immediately. None of the DS4's engines are especially thirsty or dirty, even the petrol ones. Uh, all of which um, manage around 45 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and return between 144 and 149 grams per kilometre of CO2, which in the case of the top near 150 mile an hour THP 200 model is pretty impressive. But of course the available diesels all easily better that. The range including, as is common for all new Citroëns and Peugeots these days, a so-called um, uh, micro hybrid model based around the 110 brake horsepower 1.6 litre HDI engine. Now this will come with the stop and start system to cut the engine when you don't need it when you're waiting at the lights or stuck in traffic plus a clever reversible alternator which uh, is able to reclaim the energy that would otherwise be lost under braking. The model concerned is badged 1.6 E HDI and it manages 64.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 114 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now that doesn't seem at first glance uh, a great deal different from the kind of figures you'd get from the conventional DS4 1.6 litre HDI with a, a normal six speed manual gearbox uh, that returns 60.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 122 grams per kilometre of CO2. But that's until you take account of the fact that the eHDI variant also includes a six speed semi automatic EGS gearbox. What else to tell you? Well, there's FreeDrive, a, a system that is uh, claimed to take all of the worry and much out of the cost out of everyday ownership of this car. Um, it can be uh, tailored to your individual requirements to include everything from maintenance and regular servicing to uh, breakdown and recovery, MOT testing, even the replacement of wear and tear items like tires. Then there's residual values. Well, the DS sub-brand uh, has higher residual values than other mainstream Citroen models, so you can be pretty sure of getting the premium that you paid for a DS4 over a, a C4 back when resale time comes. Insurance groups range between 14 and 21 on the 1 to 50 grouping scale. For the 2 litre HDI 160 diesel model that I'm driving here, it's between groups uh, 23 and 24. And for the top THP 200 petrol model, it's group 31. This DS4 is a brave design. Hardly groundbreaking, but brave nonetheless in the way that it brings elements of so many motoring genes together and somehow makes them work in one very appealing package. Whether you arrive at this car from a Qashqai-like crossover, a curvy coupe, or a super shopping rocket, you'll find something familiar, blended along with intriguing qualities that won't be. 
I'm not sure whether this is a whole new class of car, but it's certainly a whole new class of Citroen. Unique, just as every DS should be.